Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the host of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Berizuki. Ah, Here we go again. Growing in Grace, thank you for joining us this week, our 15-minute podcast. And, you know, there are people out there telling other folks about this, and we appreciate that. You can find our past broadcasts, our archived programs on Joel's website, graceroots.org. I'm Mike Kapler, along with Joel Brzezicki. Hey. um, Hey. What's going on? (laughs) Hey, I told somebody about it today. Did I wake you up there? Yeah. I mean, just that 30-second intro about put me to sleep. I'm telling you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You're starting to sound like religion now. Well, it's not as bad as some of our past ones where I know I would – some of my intros were a little long, I suppose. But um, (laughs) (laughs) I told somebody about our uh, program today. Uh, Do I get my brownie points? Do I I score points with God for telling somebody? I told three people, so what do I get? Well, when we get done, I'm going to have to go tell three more people, so I'll get have you beat. And then I think I'll have a better standing. Not a better understanding, <laughs> but a better standing. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was does, a good one. This does kind of you know, get into what we're talking about. Jesus versus religion. Uh, Jesus versus, uh, or, you know, performance and religion versus relationship and Jesus. Kind of what we were talking about last week and how... Uh, religion, you know, there's kind of a, a leaven, works its way into a person's life like leaven does in bread, uh, like yeast does. It kind of, you just you get a little bit of it, and it works its way in there, and it really destroys the whole thing. You're walking along in freedom in Jesus Christ, and somebody comes along with some religion, with some legalistic bondage, and it works its way in there. And Jesus said to, you know, to the disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of that stuff. The life that we have in Jesus Christ is a life of grace. We're not scoring points with God with anything that we do. As good as it makes our flesh feel, there's nothing, absolutely nothing we could do to earn points with God or to maintain our standing. And so the whole religious mentality you know, we've got to break free from that, and we're going to maybe compare some some more things this week uh, between religion and real, true life in Christ. Well, let's do that right now. And, and, you know, some people are wondering why our churches aren't more full. I know some are more full than others, but by and large, I'm talking about the church world, not, not any particular denomination, but the believing church world. Why is it that so many people are at home instead of in church on Sunday? I believe part of it is because, yeah, you could say people are lazy, all right, that's part of it. But there's a lot of other reasons, too. I, I think that the church, by and large, for many, many years, perhaps centuries, has offered religion, and what the world wants is God. And so what Joel and I are going to do right now, we've got a list comparing Jesus, or true Christianity, to religion, typically man's effort to get to God. So I had this idea, Joel, that I could be Jesus, and you could be religion. Oh, man, I want to be Jesus. No, no. <laughs> well, it's All right, my I turn. I'm going to tell So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a word or a phrase. I'll be Jesus. Joel, you come back with what could be compared to that on the religion side. Sounds right. good for, to me. For example, uh, under Jesus, if I say easy and light, what would religion say? Uh, hard and heavy. All right. If I say no condemnation, what's religion? Kill her, and that would be the woman caught in adultery. Freedom. Bondage. Be it. Do it. Be made whole. You are unclean. I made you perfect. You're not good enough. What can I give you? What can you give me? Oh, peace. Trouble. What's right with you? What's wrong with you? All right. Comparing Jesus to religion here. Got a few more. Uh, You are righteous. Earn your righteousness. Forgive. An eye for an eye. Bring the children. They're too young. Believe. Work. Proclaim. Explain. It is finished. It is never enough. You are holy. You are unworthy. Do not conform. 
look like us. <laughs> so there's some samples <laughs> of comparing Jesus, our relationship with him, a loving relationship, versus what religion demands. Yeah, those are some good things. I mean, some really good contrast. You know, the, I used to, and I still do, kind of, I carry a little a tape recorder around with me. Uh, nowadays, it's a voice, it's a digital voice recorder, and uh, I would use that thing to record my thoughts as I was thinking about our life in Christ. And one phrase that I found myself using a lot, just in, in my natural, when, when I was talking out loud into my recorder, was there's a big difference you know, there's a big difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. There's a big difference between life in Christ and life under religion. And if, you know, you think about some of these things that we've just been talking about, there is such a big difference. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. There's a big difference between that and, you know, the first thing we mentioned here on this list, uh, where religion kind of makes things hard and makes things heavy. You know, you bear heavy burdens trying to and striving to keep yourself right with God. So there's a big difference between uh, religion and the true, genuine life that we have in Christ. Well, uh, you know, again, re religion just robs you of your freedom, and, and it doesn't bring peace. So th there is a big difference. You know, I'm not sure. I, I've been a Christian a long time, but I'm not really sure my lifestyle has changed much since I've come into an understanding of faith righteousness or the grace walk, if you will. I'm not sure that I've I really changed that much outwardly, but inwardly the peace and the, the joy and, and the rest that I have in him is so much different. It's, it's almost the difference between night and day compared to, even though I was a Christian, compared to what I was going through as a believer before I understood anything about faith righteousness. You know, Joel, I was looking through on Colossians chapter 2. I know we're in the Easter season as we record this here. You know, there's a lot of different religious activities that, that take place, especially around this time of the year. And we're not here to try to destroy any of those traditions or make people feel bad or try to offend anybody. I think part of our goal here is just to let you know there's a lot of things people are doing out there, religiously speaking, that you really don't have to be trying to do anymore. Everything has been given to us through faith in Christ. And, you know, Paul was making his point in Colossians. I wish I know we've gone over this chapter before, and I wish we could just go through the whole thing again. But I'm going to pick up in the middle of something here. He just got done telling people that they were completely forgiven and no longer bound to the law. That's part of what he was just talking about. And then he goes on to say, So because of that, because you are now free, let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival, a new moon, or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility, and the worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Um, and he goes on, uh, I'm picking up in verse 20 now. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> there's so much in there, and that last phrase really has always stuck out to me. All of these things, they look so good. You know, they look like you're really doing so good in your Christian life when, when you've got the great outward appearance. You're going to church every week. You're reading your Bible every day. And not that these things are bad in, other, in and of themselves. Uh, you're serving faithfully in your church. You're, you're dressing right. You're listening to the right music, you know, so on and so forth. Again, we're not picking on anyone for doing a certain thing or not doing a certain thing. That's not the point here. The point here is that if we make our life in Christ about all these things, these things have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion and false humility, neglect of the body. But there's one thing about all of this. When we try to make this what life in Christ is about, 
They have absolutely no value when it comes to the indulgence of the flesh. The substance is really in Jesus Christ himself, the person of Christ living in and through us. And so we can't make it about all these external things. Our external lives, like you were talking uh, Cap, you say a lot of your lifestyle hasn't really changed on on the outside, but on the inside a lot has changed. And that's really what what matters, the new creation that you've become in Jesus Christ. And whether or not some of these externals change in our lives, that's not the point. You know, what has been done on the inside of us, sure, it's going to work itself out onto the outside in one way or another, but the point is, let's not judge one another. Let's not get our get down on ourselves or on other people uh, concerning all these external things. But what really matters is who we are in Christ and, and what God has made us to be. Yeah, and I should emphasize, if we were grading on the curve here from man's perspective, Joel, what I meant to say, you know, by my, my lifestyle hasn't changed much. I've been a Christian a long time, so by man's standards, you know, I was living a pretty good life. And, uh, you know, we, we know that that's not how we're judged. I'm, I'm just saying that I didn't change much outwardly from, you know, the things I was doing because I was already, quote, unquote, living the Christian life, so to speak. Of course, now I understand that it's Christ living through me. And that's the difference. Now, there was a time where I even felt that not reading my Bible for a day was a sin. You know, I knew better, but I just felt so guilty about not doing it. You know what? Even though I was reading my Bible almost daily... I was really in the flesh, like you were talking about. What was my motivation? My motivation was to try to establish my own righteousness. I was caught up in the flesh, even though I was doing good things. I I don't have to worry about that anymore. I still do a lot of the same good things. It's just that now I I trust in Christ and his finished work alone. If, If I ask the Lord for anything, it's for me to be sensitive to his spirit who lives within me and to allow him to move through me in ways that he wants to. Yeah, that's totally the difference between uh, Jesus and religion. You know, religion will say, here's a set of things that you need to do every day or every week or or whatever to maintain your standing with God, to keep yourself right with God, uh, to keep him pleased with you, and and so on and so forth. That's religion, and it's going to manifest itself in lots of different ways, as we've been talking about, whereas life in Christ... A pure, genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, which God has restored to us. He's given us his son, Jesus Christ, in whom there is life. And he's placed us in the life that is in Jesus Christ. And uh, that life is lived not from a list, not from a, a bunch of external things that we're trying to follow, but it's lived from a simple trust in the life of Christ and, and God's you know, God's grace that works in us abundantly, more than what we could ever imagine. And so when we give ourselves over to that rest and over to that trust, we'll find a brand new life. And we'll see that the, those external things can't do anything against the indulgences of the flesh. Well, hey, uh, we got to wrap it up for this week, Cap. Uh, do, we do invite people to check out the website, graceroots.org, where you can find past archives of all of our programs. And we ask you to invite a friend. Share this with a friend and uh, let other people know about the Growing in Grace program. I'm Joel along with Cap, and we'll be back again with you next time for more talk about growing in grace. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Baruzaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. 